So in my last business, I ended up scaling up to $140,000 every single month. But what I found the craziest part was, was that as we continued to grow, the less I worked. Now, I started that business working like 16 hours every single day. And by the end of it, I was logging in just a couple times every single month. And the secret was, of course, having a fantastic team. But more than that, I found it was the AI automation. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how I structured the AI automation in my business so that you can do the same thing for your business as well. Now, before we dive in, there is one thing that I would like you to understand. And that is that every single business has what I would like to define as a customer life cycle, which is a predictable journey that every single client is gonna go through. Now, at every single stage of this customer life cycle, you're usually gonna repeat the same actions with just slight variations. So for example, when somebody inquires on your website, you're probably gonna send every single person the same email, just with slight changes based on things like what service they were inquiring about. Now, the goal of every single step is to move a person from the stage they're currently at just to the next stage. So it's just moving from point A to point B. And once you map out every single one of these touch points in your business, you can start writing down all the actions you're doing manually and then figure out how you can automate every single one of those manual actions. And that is exactly what I did. Now I realized most of the stuff that I was doing at the beginning could be automated. And I went down this deep rabbit hole, spending eight years learning exactly how I could automate literally every single part of my business and it ended up saving me hours every single day personally but more importantly I would say that it automated the equivalent of like 30 full-time employees while we are just a team of 15 and here's the thing these life cycle stages it doesn't just apply to like sales for example it applies to marketing fulfillment recruitment analytics bookkeeping like literally every single part of your business now while every single business is slightly different and there's always nuances I'm gonna share with you how mine ran and if you're in the service industry, you're going to feel like it seems pretty familiar. Now we're going to break this down into three parts. First marketing, then sales, and then fulfillment. And as we go through every single stage, you'll notice a pattern emerge. The goal of every single system is to simply move a client from where they're currently at to the next step in the life cycle journey. Now I just want to preface what I'm going to be sharing with you is actually a pretty complex system, but I'm going to be breaking it down as much as possible to give you a clear picture of how this all works together. Now in terms of marketing, we found clients through multiple different streams like SEO, Google Ads, social media, and other sources as well. Now, when it comes to like SEO, for example, I use tools like NNN to generate an entire blog post that brought us in over 1,500 clicks every single day. Now, on top of that, we also use social media, we automated the posting, all of that kind of stuff. And usually for most of these lead sources, at least when it comes to like SEO and Google Ads, the main goal here was to send qualified people to my site. And typically when people visited the site, they would be funneled down a landing page to fill out a short quote form. Again, there's a lot of different things that you could do on a website page, but typically for us, we tried to get people to fill out a quote form. And once they clicked submit, that would typically be the end of the marketing and the beginning of the sales automation. Now at this stage, people would become a new lead and trigger what I like to call the new lead workflow. And it really just had one goal in mind, and that was to get people on a sales call because the sales happened on the call and not through emails and text messages. So how this workflow worked is we would call leads within 60 seconds or less. And the reason I say 60 seconds or less, and I don't want to get on a tangent here, is because there was a study that came out that found that if you call leads within 60 seconds, you increase your conversion rate by up to 391%. So you can literally get four times the amount of sales by doing no extra work and also spending no extra money there's not many things in life that are going to get you that return. Now, just kind of moving on past that, if people don't answer that first call, the automation is going to take over and send follow-up text messages, and emails until they end up hopefully booking a call. And here's the thing, again, with all these emails, with all these text messages, not only at this stage, but other stages as well, nearly all the messages that we're sending are identical. We just swap out details like, hey, I saw you're inquiring about DJ services or photo services or video services based on what they actually inquired about. Now, I, I say DJ photo and video just because my last business was in the wedding space. Now, the next stage is the sales call. And usually there's two outcomes on a sales call, at least in my last business. We would either disqualify the lead because they just weren't a good fit, or we'd need a follow-up call booked because almost nobody that we talked to on the initial sales call actually closed on that call. Now, while on the phone with somebody, my team would fill out an internal sales form with all the client's details. So their price, the date of their events, all the project info, everything we needed to collect 
about that person. And then once we submitted the form, what we do is trigger a new workflow called the sales call workflow. And what that does is it automatically generated things like contracts or invoices. It even scheduled follow-up calls between us and that client again, send off text messages, thanking them for their time and all of that kind of stuff. And when it comes to those follow-up calls, there is usually three outcomes that would happen. The lead would either show up to the appointment, they would no show or they would cancel. And no matter what happens, we would automate all three outcomes. So once somebody booked a follow-up call, reminders would automatically go out not only to our sales team, but also the lead as well to avoid anyone on either side from no showing. And in each email, there was a link for that lead to cancel. And while that is optional, the reason I include that in there is because I'd rather know in advance if somebody was going to cancel so that I could book that time with a client that potentially could actually end up closing. Now, if somebody did cancel, or if they did miss a call, a new workflow would start, which would essentially re-engage with that lead in an attempt to rebook the meeting at a later point in time. Just because people cancel doesn't mean that they're automatically gonna be disqualified. Sometimes life just gets busy and they need to reschedule for, for a later point in time. Obviously, a lot of the time, they have no intention of moving forward with you, but it's always good to re-engage anyways. And the messages in all of these workflows stayed pretty consistent across every single client. Now, about 25% of our leads, they actually ended up closing before they jumped on that second call with us. But in many cases, I think like 6% of the time, client leads needed more than 10 calls just to end up closing the deal. And so why I'm mentioning this is because the goal of every single appointment was simply just to book a follow-up call until we got a definitive yes or a definitive no from the client. Now, if a lead was lost, we'd remove them from the system. But if they were gonna close, we'd know because they'd end up going ahead and signing the contract that we sent them after the initial sales call. And of course, not everyone's gonna pay the moment they sign. In a perfect world, they, they would. I wish that was the case. But a lot of the times, people would wait like six months to a year before actually going ahead and paying. And so what we did was we built out a contract sign workflow, which initiated once somebody signed the contract and would send follow-up reminders that redirected the client via email back to the invoice to hopefully go ahead and pay. Now, there's two important notes that I wanna point out here. Anytime somebody reached a new stage in the customer journey, what we did is we automatically removed them from all previous workflows because nothing is worse than a client getting an email to jump on a sales call they just had 15 minutes ago. Unfortunately, I've actually gone ahead and done that and it's horrible and it's really embarrassing. And the second thing is that you always want to set time windows so that messages are only sent during business hours. I haven't met a client yet that actually likes receiving messages <laughs> at 2 a.m. in the morning. Now, once a deal is actually paid, it's going to move into the contract paid stage and fulfillment begins. And kind of how you automate the, your, the rest of your business depends on the business model you have. But in my case, anytime a deal is paid, we'd automate multiple things at the same time, like bookkeeping or notifications or onboarding. And so when it comes to bookkeeping, each payment we received would trigger a workflow that would automatically go ahead and update QuickBooks and update Google Sheets so that all our records were straight. And from there, we'd automatically send a thank you email with a link to to an onboarding form to collect all of the information that we needed to be able to show up to that person's event or wedding and actually perform to the degree that they'd expect us to. So we'd send that all over, but obviously not everyone's gonna go ahead and fill out that form the moment you send it over. So we'd usually send reminders like three and seven and 10 days after they paid to remind them to go ahead and fill out the form. And of course, in rare instances, we'd give them a call if they never went ahead and filled it out. And just the last thing is that when we received payments, we trigger a project management workflow where we'd use a tool called ClickUp to automatically create and assign tasks. We'd also manage projects in ClickUp and we'd track progress. Now, before we had a proper system in place, things would get swept under the rug. And as you could imagine, that would lead to mistakes, which would lead to bad reviews, which would also lead to refunds. And since we were in the wedding space, we had to keep every single one of our team members in sync with all the details of the upcoming events. So we'd always be sending out automated text messages messages and emails at regular intervals leading up to the date of every single event to keep everyone prepared. We even had what I'd like to call an airplane check-in system where we'd have contractors check in the morning of when they woke up, also when they were leaving, and then they'd be required to submit a photo of them when they arrived at the venue. Now, a day after 
the event, we would trigger the project complete workflow where we'd send clients an email thanking them for working with us and also including a link to a short feedback form. Now we'd ask them to rate our services at a five and any lower ratings were automatically filtered out while anyone that gave us like a four or a five star rating were asked to submit their experiences on Google and we'd link them over to Google. And after an event, we'd also have to edit photos and videos and deal with revisions. And essentially what that is, is a repeat of the project management workflow that we talked about earlier. Editing projects would come in, they'd be added to ClickUp, and after being complete, the clients would automatically receive their deliverables in an email with a link to request changes. They would go ahead and submit any changes that they wanted, which would flow straight back into the same ClickUp system and would restart the process until everything was finalized. Essentially, it would just go in a, cycle, a circle over and over again until everything was good to go and they're happy with the end results. Now, you could map out the same kind of automation step-by-step -step for every part of your business. Recruitment, analytics, you could do it for everything else as well. And I'm gonna link videos down below in the description for how you can go ahead and do this. But while it's important to show you what I did automate, it's also really important to show you what I didn't automate. So we never automated, of course, like the wedding services themselves, like the DJ photo video services, of course, <laughs> that wasn't automated. But we also didn't automate the editing, the client calls, the personal follow-up messages, or any one-off tasks that didn't follow a predictable flow. Um, and the reason why we did that is kind of simple. It's just that people are willing to spend a ton of money on their wedding day for it to be perfect. And they also have <laughs> what I'd like to consider as pretty high standards or expectations. And even like the slightest whiff or the slightest hint that they're talking to an AI agent could literally kill a deal instantly and even potentially lead to a negative review. And because customer service was everything in that space, I did not want to risk it. Even if AI calling and chatbots were cheaper, the opportunity cost of losing clients would have far outweighed the cost of hiring people to do the work in the first place. Now, just as a friendly reminder, um, for those of you that are looking to start a business or just at the beginning stages, I would not automate everything that I just showed you like tomorrow. The systems that you should be building should reflect where you're at in your journey. So if you are just starting out a business, automating things like fulfillment before you even have clients is just another form of procrastination. What I'd recommend is start by doing everything manually at the beginning, which might sound counterintuitive, but I would do that to perfect the system and then only automate things once the time you're spending doing the work outweighs the time it takes to build the systems. And what I meant there by like, you know, perfecting the systems is that if you try and automate things while you're still figuring everything out, you're just going to end up wasting a ton of time rebuilding the same system over and over again. I'd rather wait until you're super happy. It all makes sense. Everything is like, it's just the ideal system for you. It's not going to change that much. And then you start automating the process. And the last thing I want to point out here is that once the systems are in place, the last step is optimization. And how you do this is split testing every time text message, every email, every single workflow, 10, 20, or even 30 times to find the winning variant. This is such an important step because every shiny object that comes out today or tomorrow or in five years from now is never going to be able to beat, in my opinion, a workflow that you've tested a hundred times to find the winning formula. This is how I went from 16 hours a day down to only logging in a couple times every single month and how I also scaled up to seven figures with that business. Now, if you want to build these systems for yourself, I put together a free two hour course on how you can go ahead and build out the basics. And if you guys are interested in taking it to the next level in my school community, I have all of the blueprints that I've talked about in this video for you to download and implement into your business. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you found value in this video. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks and bye-bye.